Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video continuing on with the Star Wars movie reviews. And yes, I finally got a haircut. <laughs> um, it took long enough, but I finally got one. And I'm um, going to be talking about episode two today, Attack of the Clones, which is actually a worse movie than Phantom Menace, in my opinion. <laughs> um... Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse than Phantom Menace, it actually does with this one and then the Disney ones. But we'll get to those when we get to those. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, this one, it, I mean, you know, if someone gave me a choice, would you rather watch Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones? I'm definitely going to say Phantom Menace. Um, it, it It's a way better film than this. This movie... Not only is it unnecessarily long, I think this is the longest Star Wars film. I think Revenge of the Sith is slightly shorter than this one, but that's a way better movie. Um, Revenge of the Sith is <laughs> the only one of the prequels that I like, and that's, I think, the one that people, most people out there quite enjoy. And that's fine, because it's actually a good movie, in my opinion. Um, but we'll get to that one next. But anyway... Um, it's way too long. This movie did not need to be two hours and 22 minutes, somewhere in that time frame. Um, I know, well, Return of the Jedi is like two hours and 16 minutes. Yeah, well, you know what? Return of the Jedi is a much better film. It cuts at a way better pace. There's way more action, and it's the conclusion to the story, so I can give it a pass there. Anyway... This movie is just... I've always had a problem with the runtime of this film. I get it. It's Star Wars. It's science fiction. But it doesn't need to be damn near two and a half hours. You know, this isn't... Well, even... I don't... Actually, the longest Star Trek film is the first one. And I actually enjoy Star Trek, the motion picture, quite a bit. Um, but we'll get to Star Trek when we get to Star Trek. Right now, it's about Star Wars. But... This movie's way too long. The love story is really creepy, and it's really forced. And, you know, I'm, like, so surprised that with all this shit that's been going on in the world, all this cancel culture and everybody being offended and all this other bullshit, how come this hasn't been called out? To be, to be perfectly honest, how come the, the really awkward, weird love story between Anakin and Padme has never been called out. I don't know. I, I just always found it to be weird and awkward. Because in the first... In episode one, I shouldn't say the first movie, because it's not the first movie. Star Wars is the first movie. In Phantom Menace, Anakin's a little kid. You know, Padme's a teenager. And then by the time this movie comes around, I believe Padme is an adult. And then Anakin's a teenager. And then by the time you get to the third movie, they're both adults. But it's still weird, you know. It's still weird to me. It, and I get it. They had to explain everything. But, you know, it, they couldn't have worked on that a little bit more. It would have made more sense if in Phantom Menace, Anakin was a teenager and Padme was a teenager. And you get to this movie and Anakin's about to be an adult. You know, that would have been a little less creepy and a little bit less weird um and i mean the actors that portrayed them were adults as far as i know um when they filmed this one and particularly the third one um i believe hayden christensen was 18 or 19 and uh natalie portman is actually not that much older than him hold on a second <laughs> Alright, sorry about that pause. I got a phone call, important phone call, um, about work. So anyway, um, back to what I was saying. Um, again, as far as I know, they were both adults when they filmed these films. Filmed these films, that's a double negative. So at least it didn't get really weird. But in terms of story, it's really weird. And it's just uncomfortable. And yeah, I even as a kid, I never liked that. So anyway, um, but it's just, I mean, other than the the love story and the runtime it is just a like phantom menace it's just a super boring film i mean blah 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 like it's just so sluggish and 
you know, like Phantom Menace, or actually, I mean, yeah, like Phantom Menace, there really wasn't a whole lot of action in the film. Um, I know people would argue, well, A New Hope, I don't call it A New Hope, Star Wars doesn't have a lot of action, but again, actually all of those movies cut at a way better pace, the run times are way better, and... You know, it keeps you in, engaged and it keeps you going. This movie, not so much. This movie, you know, I've seen this this one and the other two in the prequel trilogy. I've seen these movies plenty of times. I used to watch these movies a lot, to be honest. But, you know, as I get older, I'm like, okay, you know, it's, it's really boring. I mean... You, in the beginning, in the first act, there's a little bit of action. You know, Obi-Wan and Anakin chasing after the bounty hunter and that kind of stuff. And then it just really gets slow with the romance and more of the politics that they, you know, forgot to get rid of in, in this one. And more about the Jedi. And then, you know, Anakin kills the Tusken Raiders that killed his mom. And, oh no, gonna have a little bit of the dark side. And then they go to whatever the planet's called with the clones and then Obi-Wan goes there and there's a little bit of action, little tiny fisticuffs and then you get the finale, which I do like the finale, the big epic battle. But again, you know, the original, the good Star Wars film, the really good Star Wars films had no CGI and these films have way too much CGI in them. And any other Star Wars films besides the originals have way too much CGI and it's unnecessary. They could have, you know... Now, Phantom Menace had a lot of practical. I will give that movie credit there, like I said. But Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith have way too much CG in it. And it's completely unnecessary, in my personal opinion. Um, you know, but it's just... You know, again, the movie... George Lucas didn't learn until the next one, thankfully. But... You know, the I think the problem, the biggest problem with the prequels is that George Lucas was too much of a control freak. Now, yes, he directed the first Star Wars, you know, that's what I call it, because that's what it was called when it came out. That's what the VHS I'm looking at says right there, Star Wars. That's what I will always call it. I will not call it Episode Four. I will not call it A New Hope. It's called Star Wars. Get over it. Um, you know, he wrote and directed that film, and it became what it became but you know he kind of backed off with empire and jedi and i'm glad and i think that's the biggest problem is he got so out of control and he let his ego get so out of control that he refused to let anyone else do these and you can see it on the blu-ray um on the on the making of there's a lot of clips where you know, people are making all these suggestions that are really good, and then he just gets angry and says, no, we're going to do it my way, because I'm George Lucas. And it's like, okay, that's stupid. Um, you know, it's like, come on now. It, it's dumb. But, you know, that's the biggest problem, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, he got mad. I, and I think it was out of jealousy. I think it's because, you know, he didn't direct Empire and Jedi, and, and he, of course, went in and changed everything over the course of you know 40 some years now 43 years now. 44 years it's 2021 i keep forgetting it's march and i yeah anyway um but yeah you know george should have just let it go and let other people do these films or not do them at all which is the the bigger thing but anyway um but positives things i like about this movie yes ewan mcgregor is back as obi-wan um definitely the best thing out of the prequels in my personal opinion was him uh christopher lee is count dooku you know um i didn't mention her in the phantom menace but i don't mind um natalie portman in these movies i think she you know did the best job that she could um but again uh Hayden Christensen was was miscast as as Anakin, as the younger Anakin. I know Jonathan Brandis from Sidekicks um, with Chuck Norris auditioned for the role, and clearly he didn't get it. But you know, I think he would have did better. That's just me. Um, 
just, you know, wrong. And I know, it, again, he's gotten a lot of shit over the years that he didn't really deserve. Um, you know, and his career, like, really got affected by it. Because, I mean, you look at the other stuff that he was in. He was in Jumper. Wasn't that? Yeah, Jumper. I never saw that. And I know he was in Takers with Paul Walker, but that's not really a good movie. Um, so his career got really affected by this, and that's kind of unfair, but that's unfortunately how it goes in Hollywood. We all, I think we all know that at this point, but it is what it is. But, um, I mean, I do like Django Fett. It was cool to see, you know, where Boba, Ke Boba Fett came from, but Django Fett was cool. Um, you know, the clone troopers and that kind of stuff was cool the big battle at the end with all the jedi you get to see yoda fight that was cool so i mean there is positives in the film you know there there's a couple good lines like i want to sell you death six you don't want to sell me death i don't want to sell you death six you want to go home and rethink your life i'm going to go home and rethink my life like there's some some good moments there's some good dialogue um again particularly with you and mcgregor which you know Honestly, looking forward to the Obi Wan spinoff. That would—that's something I actually have an interest in because he's coming back, and I like him as an actor. So, yeah, um, we'll see when that comes out. I don't know because everyone's, you know, pissed off at Disney, rightfully so. But we'll get to that later in another video. But yeah, I mean, there's really not much for me to say about this one. This is definitely the weakest of the the prequel trilogy. In, in, in all honesty, yeah, I would rather watch Phantom Menace over this. You know, it, it's a pretty weak movie, apart from the positives that I mentioned. Um, and I do remember the hype. The hype for this when it came out was not as big as Phantom Menace. And even though, well, actually, well, no, they came out around the same time because Spider-Man... The first Spider-Man film came out around the same time as this. And I think people were more hyped up for that than they were for this. Um, yeah, I do remember that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I do remember the hype. I remember the promotion. It, it was big. It was really big. But it was not as big as Phantom Menace. And I think, again, when Phantom Menace came out, it was almost instantaneously because of the internet and everything got the reputation that it still has today and i think you know star wars needed to kind of redeem itself which they kind of did with the next movie and then it went back to shit in terms of feature films um but yeah but yeah i remember the the clone wars video game wasn't too bad i remember playing that on uh, gamecube actually that was cool um i remember they had uh, spoons, like in the cereal boxes, they had Star Wars spoons, which was pretty cool. I never had any of them, but I remember. Um, I do remember when the, when the DVD came out and the VHS, there was a, a spot and it was like, Huda Man, Yoda Man. And they really played off of Yoda's uh, image in this film for the promotion, which I think was pretty cool. And I think a lot of people really like that part to see Yoda actually fight it's like yeah this is Yoda he's a badass like why can't we have more of this um and that's still a highlight of the film I I will be honest I still like that it's fucking come on man it's Yoda it's fucking Yoda like everybody loves Yoda um but good stuff in there you know with Yoda uh as it's kind of the focus of some of the advertising um and then I did I remember didn't see this in theaters. Um, I rented the DVD. Like, when it first came out on DVD, I rented it from Blockbuster. And then, like, the next day, I went to FYE. And at that point, they were really trying to get rid of VHS. Like, VHS was... And this was, like, 2002, 2003. Like, this was, you know... still VHS was still being made, but not as much as it used to be. And, like, the tape was really, the tape was, like, ten bucks back then, you know. And I had the tape, had the VHS, and used to watch it, again, quite frequently. And I think I, I did have the DVD at one point, and then I got rid of the, the prequels, because I was kind of done 
with that. And I still am for the most, except Revenge of the Sith, but we'll talk about that in the next video. But, um, yeah. So anyway, I mean, at the end of the day, Attack of the Clones, you know, it's, it's not a good movie, in my opinion. There's things about it that I like, but it's not a really good movie. Um, Phantom Menace is a better film. It's very, it's too long. The romance is awkward and it's weird and it's very sludgy. It's, it's, it's not there. You know what I mean? It's not there. And it's kind of like Phantom Menace, but Phantom Menace was better. At least Phantom Menace had, you know, the pod race and some other stuff about it that I really liked. Um, but I mean, eh, it is what it is at this point. But anyway, um, next up, of course, we're going to knock out the last of the prequels, which is Revenge of the Sith, which is the only one that I like, and um, I think really the only one that most people like. This, you know, luckily, this one has gotten um, a pretty good reception over the years, which is cool. So we'll talk about that one next. But anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys later. See you.